All right, now to an important deadline that everyone needs to start thinking about by 2035. All new cars sold in New York State will be electric. Yeah, that is a mandate created by the state in an effort to make travel more environmentally friendly. Well, it's a deadline that's 12 years away. We get it right. The conversation about this major change, though, is starting right now. And that's because electric cars mean a shift in the mindset for many drivers. They need to plug in and charge, which equals an added load for the power grid. Tonight, 7 News anchor Katie Morse is taking a look at this transition from all sides, from auto industry leaders to politicians and an electrician, community leaders and people ahead of the curve who already drive those electric vehicles. I really like it. I was a little leery because I thought, oh, is this going to be a pain in the neck or not? And it's really not. Arthur Hook has owned his electric car since May. He's been using public chargers like these outside the Walmart in Cheektowaga and says the transition has been pretty easy. I usually just charge once a week on Sunday morning. I usually will charge and go get something to eat for breakfast. When I'm done, it's all charged. Hook says the incentives offered when he got his car made him decide to give the Hyundai Genesis a try. Well, I got $7,500 rebate for uh, electric vehicle and then electrify america gave you for three years a half hour free charging at any station every day come 2035 all new cars sold in new york have to be electric the rebates which come from the federal and state government are designed to push drivers to them now but a lot of dealers tell me they're not happy with the rebate program there's a lot of red tape when it comes to which cars and which drivers qualify to get cash back that doesn't sit well with customers tremendous amount of confusion Tremendous amount of discontent. They just assume everybody's eligible for the entire $7,500 rebate, and that's not true. Where was the car built? What was the battery built? What's your income level? It's a square peg, it's a Rubik's Cube. Paul Stasiak is the president of the Niagara Frontier Auto Dealers. He says the questions about rebates are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the e-car transition. Will we be able to meet the infrastructure requirements? Will we be able to meet the demand for the, for the chargers? You can see three gas stations on a corner. At all three points of the four corners are gas stations with multiple pumps. It takes about three to five minutes to fill your car up. It takes a lot more than three to five minutes to charge your car. This is what the current industry standard is. Installing chargers across Western New York is something Michael Prinzi, president of PPR Energy Solutions, knows well. What we're building here for uh, for Basil Ford is actually going to be a DC fast charger. His energy company specializes in EV charging installations. They've installed hundreds at businesses and homes across the area. He says if you're considering the shift to an electric car and you want to charge at your house, your first call should be to an electrician so you're not caught off guard when you bring a car home. Some customers need brand new services just to accommodate the EV chargers. Um, some customers, they have plenty of power in their building already or in their home. Upgrading the service at your house can run homeowners up to $5,000. It's an upfront cost a lot of people in the city of Buffalo won't be able to pay. On Buffalo's east side, there's already talk of how New York State's electric car mandate could impact neighbors. Anytime we use the word mandate, I always get a little cringy as I think about minoritized people. We have never been positively impacted anytime we say mandate. The nonprofit Open Buffalo on Jefferson Avenue is working to get the word of that upcoming mandate out. The group is a clean mobility initiative, making sure people who live in the community have a say in how that state mandate moves forward and what it looks like here. When we talk about where charging stations are in our community, that decision shouldn't come from Albany or Washington, D.C. Those decisions should come from the people directly in the neighborhood. The group is also pushing to improve public transportation and walkability in the neighborhood, knowing how emissions have impacted people living here over the years. They're noticing bronchitis. They're noticing uh, the frequency and um, extreme cases and hospitalization around asthma. So again, helping community members make the connections where are these spikes and hospitalizations happening? And it's directly in communities of color in high traffic neighborhoods. So far, we've looked at rebates, cost, charging accessibility, and environmental impact. But the number one question I get when I tell people I'm working on this story is will the power grid be able to handle this added load in 2035 when all these mandates go into place? 
Well, that depends on who you ask. In very simple terms, it's impossible. Republican State Senator Pat Gallivan says even 12 years from now, New York State won't have the infrastructure in place to support clean energy plans as they are now. All the things that the Climate Action Council scoping plan calls for, it's impossible to meet that and to provide that support with the grid. That's not even accounting for how we're going to pay for it. I took that question to the power companies themselves, speaking with NYSIG and National Grid. Do you feel confident that the grid's going to be able to handle what is being asked of it when these mandates all actually go into place? Yes. We are moving forward with initiatives on investing in our transmission system, our distribution system, rebuilding stations, making sure that we have the capacity in order to meet what we anticipate is to be you know, significantly higher electric demands on our system in the coming years and decades. And we're trying to get more investment to upgrade the system before we have any pressures on our system that our customers um, you know, or won't be able to provide our customers with the load and the capacity they need when it comes. Those energy experts tell me the next decade is going to be crucial as energy companies expand their storage capacities and also where we get power from. Distributed generation is going to be huge. More solar panels, more wind, energy storage at the end of the day, and taking in all those different aspects, that's how we're going to make it, make it all work. I mean, right now you throw all these EV chargers onto the utility grid, it's not going to work. But over time, over that 10, 15 year period, you know, with all this distributed generation and all the different aspects of how power is being created, it will work. We're a voice for Western New York. Katie Morse, 7 News.